Uh, give me one second here. Uh, Dirty character for farm. Okay. Um. Okay, Eli. I'll I'll let you know 100%. Uh, or sorry, I'll, I'll let him know 100%. Okay, give me one second here. Let's get this done. You're gonna take Orgamar for Olympus. Uh, we might do that. Sure. Uh, we're gonna watch this, then we'll be ready to go. Was it paid sponsorship, not his money? Of course it is. Like, I mean, of course they're gonna. That's a paid sponsorship. Are you? Who the fuck would ever do that on their own? Like, yeah, like gambling. Like as I said, I, I don't like gambling. I don't like any sort of gambling. Uh, I'm at the point now where I'm, uh, I just, I'm not a fan of it at all. And so, uh, it's always, you know, that's going to be my stance on it. And, uh, hopefully I, 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 I never want to take any sort of gambling sponsorships or anything like that. Uh, I just, I, I don't feel like it's, uh, I, I don't feel like it's responsible. And I, I, I much, fe I feel much better promoting living at home with mom and not getting a job and being a dredge and a drain on society than gambling. Ooh, dual wield. This guy's ready. Wow, he's been in Esfahn's guild for a long time, I guess. Okay. Thunder Fury. Blessed Blade of the Windseeker. Did anybody say it? Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. Okay. Some people liked my latest video about Quel Serar. So I thought it might be fun to start a whole series about some of the more iconic weapons in the Warcraft universe. I actually need to watch the video about Quel Serar, just so I know what to do. Because I actually have no idea how to get Quel Serar. I know it has something to do with a Compendium of Dragon Slaying or something like that. Thor's Compendium of Dragon Slaying. I have no idea how to get it though. I'm calling it the Azeroth Arsenal, and okay. what better way to start it with none other than Thunder Fury, the Blessed Blade of the Windseeker. There it is, dude. Being one of the first legendaries released back in vanilla, is quite possibly one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic weapon in the entire game. I'd say it to probably get it back is. then, you needed yeah. three things. Luck, 39 friends, and a lot of gold. But before we get into how to actually obtain it, we should first talk about the history and lore behind the weapon to get a good understanding of why it's epic. Or legendary, I guess. Yes. I'll give a very abridged retelling. Simply put, it's the weapon of the former Prince of All Wind Elementals, Thunderon. That fucking asshole. A very long time ago, before the time of man, Azeroth was a stage of Damn, an that looks war fucking between badass. the four elemental lords. Regnaros the Fire Lord, Alakir, Alakir. the Wind Lord, Neptulon the Tide Hunter, yep. and Therizane the Stone Mother. Oh jeez. Their itinerary was basically Thick. to keep Azeroth Thick. in a perpetual state of chaos and destruction. Why? Well, why not? Actually, it was because there was a fifth element, spirit, that was being consumed by the world soul, Azeroth. What the this fuck? sent everything off balance, and as a result, the remaining elementals became quite violent. It's sort of like Captain Planet, with spirit as heart. So, these elemental never lords were Captain in constant Planet. war with one another, and were free to do as they pleased until the old gods arrived. Being far more I remember, powerful- like the villain in Captain Planet was like really hot, right? It was like this girl? That's like literally the only thing that I remember about Captain Planet at all. That's the only thing. And it was meh? Yeah, that's Power Rangers? I don't remember, man. I remember I, I, I was like, damn, she's hot. That was the only thing I remember about the entire fucking thing. Well, the Elemental Lords allied together in light of a common enemy. But it wasn't enough. Okay. They were defeated and were swiftly enslaved by the old gods and became tools to be used. Wow. The Pantheon would eventually arrive and defeat the old gods oh, and put shit. the elemental that's lords Sargeras. in time out, basically, and Damn. imprison them in their own elemental planes. The Firelands for Regnaros yep. and all of the Fire Elementals, Deep Home for Therizane and her Earth Elementals, Holy shit. Skywall for Alakir and his winds, and the Abyssal Ma for Neptulon and his waters. I guess I never really put all no this together. No longer having that common enemy, the elemental lords continued their war with each other, and a battle called the Elemental Sundering took place. Okay. It was a 5,000 year war between two main belligerents, Regnaros and Alakir. I killed both of them, I Regnaros have both Regnaros wasn't playing fair though. He had his two lieutenants, Baron Geddon and Gar, deceive and betray the Prince of the Air Damn, Elementals. Damn dude, Baron Geddon Thunderon. works out. They lured him into a trap, where he oh, was struck oh, oh, down oh, oh, by Regnaros, I already, I the Prince again. of the Air Elementals. Thunderon. Elemental Sundering took place. Sorry, I, I it was that a 5,000 year war between two main belligerents, Regnaros and Alakir. Okay. Regnaros wasn't playing fair though. 
He had his two lieutenants, Baron Geddon and Gar, deceive and betray the Prince of the Air Elementals. That's why they have bindings. They lured him into a trap where he was struck down by Ragnaros and his weapon, Sulphurus. We'll talk about that one in another episode. Oh, that's why they have the bindings. Ragnaros consumed much of Thunderant's Shit. essence and became far more powerful, but he saved some for later. Wow! He stored what little remained of Thunderant's essence in two special artifacts, the bindings of the Windseeker. These were placed in the hands of his trusted lieutenants, Gar and Geddon, where right. they would patrol the caverns of the Molten Core to protect Ragnaros during his slumber. So, these two bindings, although it's just a small portion of his essence, hold incredible power and would be key in creating a weapon capable of harnessing the Fallen Prince's power. Holy Which brings shit. us to the events of World of Warcraft. The first two raids in the game were Anixia's Lair and God the Molten damn, Core, dude, this is... the dawn of raiding World about of the Warcraft. War. That's right, no longer were you with four others strolling through a dungeon. You were with 39 other people working together to make it through this ultimate challenge. At this you can tell for sure this is a vanilla screenshot, not a classic screenshot, because there's a moonkin in the picture. Like that, this would never happen in, in in classic WoW. This would just never. This would never happen. And there's also five other druids. This, there's no reason for that. Point in the game, even epic items were very rare. Yep. So not just an epic, but rather a legendary, legendary. was well legendary. Massive. They required a lot of luck and dedication, and only a very small percentage of the player base would ever get them. Even to this day, 13 years uh, later, I, Thunder I just Fury like is still drop, only man. held by a small percentage of the player base. I love seeing them drop. So, how did you get it? Well, Geddon and Gar were both bosses in the Molten Core, which held a whopping 10 bosses total, <laughs> ending with Ragnaros himself. That was 9. There were different orders in which you could defeat the bosses, yep. but they were generally the 4th and 6th bosses respectively in the raid that people killed. Generally. So, fairly deep within the area. They were quite difficult during the time, mainly because, like I said, this was one of the first raids. People, for the most part, had no idea what they were doing, and it was chaos. But yep. eventually, That's people true. started getting the hang of things That's and very were able true. to take them down. They dropped several epic purple items as a reward, and a very, very small chance to drop a binding of the Windseeker, oh, the man. artifact Ragnaros had entrusted to them long ago. Oh man. Baron Geddon dropped the left binding, That's and so Gar badass. dropped the right binding. The flavor text reads, the left and right halves of Thunderon's Eternal Prison. One player needed to get both of these to be able to start the process to obtaining Thunder Fury. Another That's thing gonna I be should me say is that today. this was also back when people used Dragon Killing Points, or DKP for short. Like I said, with 40 people in one raid, Ooh, it was chaos, and this point system was a way to try and have an orderly way of distributing items to all 40 of these players. That's unfortunately what people that have to do uh, if they don't have somebody who's as ethical and fair as I am uh, in terms of distributing loot. Uh, you know, like obviously you have to do that Like if you don't really have somebody that really knows what they're doing. You would earn these points by killing bosses, and then yeah. spend them on items. And, with Thunder Fury being equipable by every class who could hold a sword, there was a lot of competition. If your guild was- It's actually not true. Uh, you couldn't use it if you were a mage. Mages can use one-handed swords. Slight inaccuracy in this video. Uh, the restrictions were relaxed later on, as far as I know. Lock too. Smart though, they would limit it preferably to warrior tanks and maybe DPS rogues since they got the most use out of it. Yep. But like I said, no one knew what they were doing back then, so even hunters would get it in some cases. So you would rate the Molten Core weekly, hope and pray that the bindings drop, and hope and pray that you have more DKP than everyone else. If you managed to get both bindings, you went to the high level Silithus zone and talked to an NPC named the High Lord Demetrian. I remember, like, in... I don't know any guild that did Thunder Fury with DKP. I don't know any guild that did that back in the day. Or Warglaves. Oh, actually, no. That's actually not true. We did Warglaves with DKP. Yes, we did actually do Warglaves with DKP. But the way that we did it was that... If you got the first Warglave, you automatically got the second one. So you're basically bidding DKP for both Warglaves, not just one. He asks you to examine a Vessel of Rebirth, which would later be used to summon the Elemental Lord, yep. Prince Thunderon, once more. If you okay. brought the right materials, that is. To do this, you needed four things. The left binding, right. the right binding, 
the essence of the right. Fire Lord, which is dropped by Regnaros, True. the final boss of the Molten Core. We have never used that. And ten legendary enchanted Elementium bars. You can only get those in BWL. So unfortunately. we have the bindings covered pretty thoroughly. As for the essence of the Fire Lord, though, this was quite hard to obtain, as you would imagine. Regnaros, being the final boss, was appropriately the hardest out of any of the encounters in the raid, and your guild needed to be on top of their game to take them down. Do you want me to say something that's like really kind of unpopular? I actually think that Gar is probably harder than Ragnaros. I, I I think I think Gar is harder. Gar is unironically the hardest fight in in Molten Core. I, I'm not even kidding. Like Gar is actually Major Domo. No, you just CC all of the mobs and then kill the melee ones. You can AOE them down. Like and, and like PV takes no skill. Well, it's Gar. Yeah, requires more coordination. Ragnaros, you just sit there and hit him until he's dead, right? I mean, that's it. I mean, I guess Ragnaros is hard for tanks. Like, that's true, but Gar is hard for tanks, too. So it's hard for me to say. 6-8 Warlocks and Gar, GG, that's true, too. You couldn't skip right to him, either. You had to kill all nine other bosses and extinguish the runes near them yeah, before yeah, you Dikino unlocked Rick's the got NPC our first, uh, that summoned Ragnaros. Luckily, though, the essence was a 100% drop rate, yep. so there was no luck involved there. Just skill. Remember earlier when I said that Skill. one of the three things you needed was a lot of gold? This well, is the Elementium bars. These enchanted Elementium bars this is came it. Into play. To make these, you needed three Elementium Flux, which you could buy from vendors at three gold each. Yep. So 30 total, which was 90 raw gold. That was nothing to sneeze at back then. But we're just getting started. You also needed the rare Fiery Core Reagent. So we 10 total for 10 bars. These dropped from the Molten Core. That's not a big deal. Like, the fiery cores are not a big deal. Uh, I, I think, honestly, like, that's not a big deal. The only hard part about it was the Elementium. Everything else was a joke. Even the Arcanite bars were a joke. Imagine thinking that you're going to get a Legendary and being held back by a couple of 25 gold bars. Not going to happen. And if your guild was nice, they'd usually supply not gonna you Not going to fucking happen. Otherwise, you'd have to buy them off of the Auction House. You also needed 10 Arcanite bars for each Enchanted bar. So 100 total. These were a high-end crafting reagent used in many endgame weapons and armor. Mm -hmm. They needed one thorium bar, which miners made, and another item called Arcanite Crystals, which you rarely got from thorium veins. And, to top it all off, only an alchemist could transmute the bars once a day, and they would also charge a fee for that too. And once again, you needed 100 of these. Holy the last shit. item you needed was something called an Elementium Ingot. This is so badass. These were rare drops from the next raid, the Blackwing Lair, which was even harder than the Molten Core. Slightly. You needed one for each bar, so ten total. Once again, very expensive and hard to get. Here's why they're hard to get. For most players, they would basically have to rely on their guild for supplying most of these materials yes. because it was just too expensive for one person to handle. So here's what it was, right? Is it all the other pieces, like aluminium ingots, this, you guys might have forgotten this from Vanilla WoW, but you could reset the instance and like re-kill all of the trash, but the goblins are the ones that drop the ingots. I remember this. They would never drop them. They only dropped them the first time, and that was it. So after we do the first week of BWL, I'm thinking we'll probably try to split raid to get all of the ingots that we need. But the odds are, like, that's only if we have uh, Thunder Fury bindings by then. Uh, yeah, they only drop it the first time. And uh, even if you reset the instance. I think even if you soft reset, too. And uh, no exploit available? Well, we'll figure something out. Don't worry. And if that wasn't enough, even smelting these bars was a challenge by itself. To learn the recipe, you had to find a special NPC in the Blackwing Lair Raid named the Master Elemental Shaper you had to mind Crit control Six, this motherfucker. who was behind four bosses in the raid. Yep. You had to have one of your priests mind control him, and if you talked to him, he would teach you how to smelt these enchanted Elementium bars. So, after a lot of work, you had your bindings, your essence, oh, and shit. your bars. Returning these to Demetrian allowed you to summon the Fallen Prince himself, Thunderland. So, you of course there would want your is. entire guild present, unless you were into getting one-shotted by elemental lords. This guy's a joke, you man. You would battle the Windseeker, He's a joke. and if you were successful, he would leave behind He's his substantially weapon, easier the than orange Ragnaros. dormant wind-kissed blade. Yep. Using it would start a quest called Rise Thunder Fury, where you would force Demetrian to use the materials you provided to infuse the weapon with power, turning it to Thunder Fury, the blessed blade of the yep. Windseeker. It had a yep. high DPS with a very fast 1.9 speed, 
agility, stamina, the best sword some resistances, in the game. and a nice proc People still use damage this in and PvC. slows attack speed of targets hit. As I said, it was preferable to give this to rogues for damage and warrior tanks for better tanking. Honestly, probably warrior tanks were the best because it was the perfect tanking weapon throughout all of vanilla, and tanks even used it for a while in the next expansion, the Burning Crusade. True. Although, as a vanilla rogue, Big I didn't want to admit that back then. Yeah, near did Zivia. So, that's the story of Thunder Fury. It's a little more epic than getting a legendary from Blinktron, isn't it? <laughs> like I said, one of the most iconic weapons this is in the a, game. This is during Legion. You'll see it linked in trade chat all the time. Yeah. You get a feat of strength if you obtain it, and it had its own card in Fuck the TCG, yeah, dude. and was re-released as an yeah, artifact dude. model for Outlaw Rogues in the Legion expansion. Hmm, maybe this is Blizzard saying that it was a rogue weapon after all. Yeah, I and don't know about that. it was also part of the Shaman Order Hall questline, where bullshit. you get Prince Thundron as a follower. You pick up the blade from the corpse of a nameless adventurer. Oh, yeah! You could even find it outside of the game in Diablo this 3, really good, Blizzard's actually. This action was RPG good. game. It was super rare, too. Certainly one of the coolest weapons in the game, even to this date. They have corrupted Ashbringer in D3, too. Certainly worthy of an episode in the Azeroth arsenal. Goddamn right. You're goddamn so, motherfucking that's about it right. for this one. Let me know if you think I should continue this series. I think it has a lot of potential. There are lots of cool it sure weapons does, and even it? armor in the you know, game. You know, now two years later that we've watched every single them, one of them. like Thunder Fury. If you have any in particular that oh. you want to see next, throw some suggestions my way. Oh, I'm making a big is, list there. right now, so I'll be writing down any requests if you guys have any. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. Like it if you liked it, and thanks for watching. Peace. So, okay. Farewell for now, mortals. Watch Benediction you if you have time. Video. See you you know what I thought we could do soon. before we, uh... I thought we could do before we go to, uh... Before we do, uh, uh, go to, uh, you know, go to Maradon, I thought about, you know, maybe, uh, going and doing a, uh, you know, maybe like a, uh, Gurubashi Arena.